Hello everyone. Welcome to the relearning session for business mathematics. So this is uh, not your typical uh, uh, study session. We are trying to do exam preparation session. So in this, what we are trying to do is uh, to give you a background of the exam and what exactly what you need to do in the month leading up to the exam, right? So in this, if I start off, we would see uh, objectives of our uh, discussion, right? So what are the objectives of uh, the today's discussion? All right, first one is understanding the paper structure, right? So what am I paper? So this is something I believe most of you are familiar with. But still, for all, I will give you a briefing on this, right? So, if your understanding is incorrect regarding this, you can uh, you can iron out those doubts with that discussion. Then coming into a past paper analysis, right? So the good news is, guys, your exam paper for AT1, it's very easy to predict what they are going to ask in the exam, right? So before you even go to the exam, you can actually uh, know what exactly they are going to ask in the respective questions, right? So I will show you how it has happened based on a past paper analysis, right? So this will help you a lot to focus your study into uh, specific uh, syllabus areas, right? So there are certain uh, questions that they always ask, right? So why not we prepare for those things? So those will be easy marks for you guys, right? I will get you those details in the past paper analysis, right? So based on the past paper analysis, Lamai, I'm going to discuss some uh, target questions as well, right? So some of the things that are commonly tested, I will give you a background of uh, how to approach those questions and uh, you can uh, refresh your memory relating to those uh, important areas, right? Then finally, of course, a questions and answers session where you can raise whatever the doubts you have in the chat, right? So uh, you have the chat option in this uh, Zoom call. So if you can, uh, if you can uh, raise your questions there, I, I'm happy to answer in this Q&A session, right? So at that Q&A session, you can even uh, turn on your mics and directly ask your questions. But uh, towards the entirety of the session, I would prefer if you uh, keep the mics mute. And at, towards the end at the Q&A session, you can uh, raise your questions. But in the meantime, you can just uh, raise your questions in the chat, no problem, okay? I will take it up at the end of the session. Okay, right, coming into the uh, understanding about your paper, right? Okay, so first of all, you have section A. Those are objective type questions. MCQ scale again, all right. MCQ scale section A, okay. how many questions are there? There are around 15 questions, right? Altogether, this will uh, give you 40 marks, right? So it's, uh, it's not, uh, how do I say? It's not easy to forecast what they can test in MCQs. MCQs can be anything, something generic, something relating to a technical area. It could be anything, right? It's a mixed bag. So MCQs, what you can do is you will have to practice based on the past papers, how MCQs are formulated, right? So uh, that is section A, which will give you 40 marks, right? So MCQs, Lamai, please remember, your exam, your time allocation would be three hours, right? So for MCQ section, don't allocate more time than let's say 45 minutes to one hour. Don't waste your time beyond that. And uh, that will make it a little, uh, little complicated, all right? So make sure that whatever uh, the MCQs that you are attempting, the entire section you should wrap up uh, within 
45 to 1 hour. That's my recommendation, right? Then coming into section B, Buka, these are uh, writing questions, all right? So there are four questions in section B, which will give you 40 marks, right? So these 40 marks are distributed 10 marks each for each of these questions, right? Prashna hatra tiena lakunu hatali hai. So what eka prashna kato lakunu dahai gaane tama section B eke paada answers denna ven, right? So section B Buddha, good news. It's very easy to predict. I can tell you what the first question would be look like, what the second question would look like, what the third and the fourth, how it looks like. If you look at the past papers, you can easily see a pattern, right? I will show it to you. Then coming into the last section, that is section C. This is also a writing question, one question, which will give you 20 marks, right? So altogether, Buddha, this will, this is how you will, uh, you will uh, demarcate or distinguish between the relevant sections in your exam. Aggregate, this will be a total of 100 marks, right? So today, if I tell you, uh, we will be focusing on this section B and section C, right? This is where you can see the patterns, right? So what they are going to ask in these four questions and what they are going to ask in this one single question, which gives you 20 marks, right? That is what we are trying to analyze today, okay? Right. So with this understanding, Lamai, let's move into our past paper analysis, right? So before this session, Buddha, what I did was I uh, actually pulled out five past papers. Okay, these are the five past papers I have uh, used or based for my analysis, right? So January 2023, this is the latest past paper that you have, right? Then two past papers for uh, 2022, Jan and July, and another two past papers for uh, 2021, again, Jan and July. Right? So altogether, you have five past papers. Okay, So the reason you need to stick to these past papers or why I stuck to these past papers is because your syllabus has changed from 2020 onwards. Right? So the syllabus that you are facing your exam would be from 2020 to 2025. Right? So even when you are studying your exam uh, past papers, right? make sure you are going to take past papers starting from 2020. That is your latest syllabus, right? So for this, I have taken five past papers. I could have taken 2020 as well, but it's the same pattern, right? We don't need more uh, past papers here to show you the pattern that the examiner follows. Yeah? This five past papers would be more than sufficient for your analysis, right? So what are the things that they have tested in these past papers, right? Okay. Moving into the next slide, I will show you how exactly the exam is, uh, examiner is testing these relevant syllabus areas in your past papers, right? Okay. I will tell you how to refer to this table. So that you don't have to start writing this on your papers or do anything. I will give you this uh, material for you. So uh, once the uh, session is done, you can always refer back to these slides and uh, get this understand, right? So you don't need to struggle to write all these down, okay? Right. So starting off with that, let's start with the first column. You have the syllabus area here, right? So for syllabus area, we have seven topics, right? video then refer right? These are the seven syllabus areas, right? Then each column here, you have the five past papers here, right? Starting from Jan 2021 up until Jan 2023, past papers, columns, right? So, the check basic mathematics for business. May follow any topic taken. Those uh, that uh, basic maths, things like percentages, things like simple equations. From those, Buddha, you can get around 10 marks here. See, question two, like a hammer, mahan ne gollo, may basic mathematics in a section. So, got a question two again again. From question two, you can obtain around 10 marks roughly in your exam, right? So for financial mathematics for business, my second topic here, what is financial mathematics for business? You remember the interest computations, those were simple and compound interest computations, loan amortization. Then 
ప్రజెంట్ వాల్యూ కంప్యూటేషన్స్ యువర్ ప్రొజెక్ట్ అప్రైజల్ సెక్షన్స్ ఏ సెక్షన్స్ వల్ల ఇంట్లో అమ్మాయి అనివార్యం క్వశ్చన్ సిక్స్ ఎకే లకు నువ్వు దహయ మెత్తం దా హతరా అరౌండ్ టెన్ టు ఫోర్టీన్ మార్క్స్ యూ క్యాన్ అప్డేట్ యూ క్యాన్ ఎక్స్పెక్ట్ ఇన్ యువర్ పేపర్ యాజ్ వెల్ రైట్ దెన్ ఫర్ ఫైనాన్షియల్ ఆపరేటివ్ మెషర్స్ ఫర్ బిజినెస్ దిస్ ఈస్ అ వెరీ స్టాండర్డ్ క్వశ్చన్ ఓన పాస్ పేపర్ కాక్ కరం బాలన్న క్వశ్చన్ త్రీ ఎకే హ్యాండిల్ ఏమో తీయని ఫైనాన్షియల్ ఆపరేటివ్ మెషర్స్ ఫర్ బిజినెస్ కి టాపిక్ ఎకే క్వశ్చన్స్ రైట్ ఆల్వేస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ టెన్ మార్క్స్ గ్యారంటీ రైట్ ద మెహిమన మెహిమన పాస్ పేపర్స్ పాస్ పేపర్స్ వల్ల పెటర్ నేగ ఫర్ షూర్ ఇన్ యువర్ టూ థౌజండ్ ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ త్రీ జూన్ ఎగ్జామ్ సారీ దిస్ వుడ్ బి ఆగస్ట్ రైట్ ఆగస్ట్ టూ థౌజండ్ ట్వంటీ త్రీ డెఫినెట్లీ దే విల్ బి అ టెన్ మార్క్ క్వశ్చన్ ఫర్ ఫైనాన్షియల్ ఆపరేటివ్ మెషర్స్ ఫర్ బిక్స్ దట్ విల్ బి క్వశ్చన్ నంబర్ త్రీ ఆల్సో రైట్ క్వశ్చన్ నంబర్ ఏ తప్పి దాదు ఓకే then data representation and descriptive measures topic number 4 meka lamai hang velena question number 5 eke prashne ahana topic eke right see question number 5 always question number 5 guaranteed minimum you will get 10 marks from data representation and descriptive measures right that's the behavior okay then comparing to quantitative variables right so the, from this topic comparing to quantitative variables in the topic eke what mata ga ade uh independent variable dependent variable then uh, things like regression analysis right correlation coefficient you remember that topic ah uh, from that topic always you will get 10 marks for sure guaranteed under question number 4 of your paper right always for sure right then probability and its applications topic number 6 this will be there in question number 6 there can be varying marks from 6 marks up until 12 marks marks 6 12 4 samanya on average lakum 10 ak wage wada ganna pulam probability topic ekak right then coming into index numbers puta index numbers kiyana ekak samanyen check karala thiyena adui ape alut syllabus ekak you see here index numbers and forecasting ata mataka athi api class ekak igena gatta uh last year's price index harsh price index api evidata igena gatta uh index numbers dasa we learn around 16 index numbers in the class right and also for forecasting we learn how to do a time series analysis right so from that in uh, the uh, writing questions liyana prashna wala lamai oka check karanna thiyen chance ekak adui as you can see here index numbers and forecasting wali దాస్ విసేకే క్వశ్చన్ నంబర్ సిక్స్ ఎకే అహల తీన లకు హతరక ప్రశ్న ప్లస్ ప్యూస్ ప్రైస్ ఇండెక్స్ ఎక ఇట పాసే దిదాస్ విసి దెకే జాన్ వల్ల ద నెక్స్ట్ పాస్ పేపర్ యూ విల్ హ్యావ్ త్రీ మార్క్ క్వశ్చన్ దట్ ఈస్ లెస్ ఫియర్స్ క్వాంటిటీ ఇండెక్స్ రైట్ లెస్ ఫియర్స్ కి ఇండెక్స్ దిగ తమ చెక్ కల్ల తీయన్నే అబ్బాయి అనిక్ పాస్ పేపర్స్ వల్ల యూ డోంట్ ఫైన్ ఎనీ రైటింగ్ క్వశ్చన్ ఫ్రమ్ దిస్ పర్టిక్యులర్ టాపిక్ రైట్ సో దిస్ విల్ గివ్ యూ అన్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఓకే వాట్ క్వశ్చన్స్ are there in the exam and for which syllabus area this is linked into it, right this is a very simple analysis right so you might think i use open the other the way uh better gala zoom link here at all a cut you get never make up in under the attack or again no 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 there is more to this right so what i am going to do next is i will tell you what exactly they have tested under these topics right for example if i say business mathematics and statistics under question 2 i will teach you what exactly they have tested in the exam me topic ekak thiyena ne sub topics goda right under basic mathematics you have so many things that we have discussed right percentages ratios progressions arithmetic uh, geometric progressions right then product pricing likewise we have learned many things under basic maths right so even within those i can pinpoint out what are the most favorite questions of the examiner right yeah the favorite questions were got you know api e tika hariyata identify karoth lamai apita puluwan ape study studying effort ekak focus karanna we don't have to study the whole uh, topic from end to end for you to get a understanding of or for you to get a uh, solid chance in facing these questions right you got a basic maths kiyana ekak a to z hariyatama danaganna you should know if you are going for like 100 marks but your objective if your objective is to get a pass right there are specific things you need to know mandatory 
right? Eighty gang water pulo exam may go to the other. That would be pure tool for your examination success, right? So now, Puta, what I'm going to do next is I will take you through the specific areas under each of these sections. If you may syllabus areas, in these seven syllabus areas, I will tell you what exactly they have tested in the exam, right? There aren't many. There are very specific pointers you need to note down, right? So those pointers, please make sure you are very familiar with. Those are like guaranteed questions in your exam. Okay. So without further, uh, further uh, delay, I will take you to each of these syllabus areas and I will show you how the examiner has tested these questions. Okay. This is the deep dive. All right. Starting off with business mathematics uh, or the basic mathematics for business, right? So go to make a lamai. I'm willing to question two again and make a question on the basic mathematics in a topic taking hurry. Basic mathematics well, within basic mathematics topic, what are the main things that they have tested in the exam? Okay. Now you can see it in the screen. See, simple equations. Simple equations, this is something you are studying in your mathematics since grade five, maybe, right? Simple equation. On what if you were the example like with the other 2x uh, plus, let's say, uh, 2x plus 5 equals 12, right? Then the examiner can ask, okay, simplify this x. X can be put to Stuff like this, simple equations, I believe uh, you are very familiar with, right? Oh, no exam. Simple equations, test color the exam. Right. What is next? Then you have simultaneous equations, right? Single link keyword, samagami, samikami. Simultaneous equations, solve with here, or then again, using the uh, function and also using your calculator. Right. For simultaneous equations, it's very easy to simplify it. Right. There will be two unknown factors. A factors they go in questions, basic mathematics at the right. Then put up, you have product pricing, margins and markups. Okay. So product pricing alamai, monada upping a handful of questions. Put up product pricing well, examine the favorite questions tamai. You have things like uh how to compute a margin, right? Then how to compute a mark up. Okay. Right? What do you need to remember in margin and markup? What are theory sessions? If you can remember our theory sessions, a margin is computed as a percentage of selling price. Selling price take a percentage of the theater or the profit take computer. That is what you call as a margin. Okay. Then you have something called a markup. That is the representation of the profit as a percentage of your cost. Right. Cost again, Pratisha take the theater or the profit take a represent. That is what you call as a markup. Right. But all the other they can give you a question saying that, okay, we have produced a product of, with a cost of, let's say, 1000 rupees. Make it a yakina, the manufacturer expects a margin or a markup. Let's say markup, a markup of 20% is expected by the manufacturer. So, what should be your selling price, right? So, put the cost of the thousand, then your markup would be 200. Again, a thousand multiply around on a 20% value that will give you a markup of 200. So, you are selling your product at 1200. So this is your simple calculation, right? So this product pricing is a very famous topic by the exam, right? Then Puta, you have arithmetic and geometric progressions, right? Single in make the keyword, Adam Adagadi, Apiganagata, N one a pade, right? Shrainiaka, Samantha Shrainiaka, Gunotra Shrainiaka, N one a pade, and some pades in some kao take a two. For explaining it in English, you might remember arithmetic and geometric progressions where in which we compute the nth term of a sequence and the sum of n terms. Right? There are different formulas for this particular uh, section. So those formulas you can study. 
right? So those are tested frequently in your exam. At least in MCQ, you would see, right? Then put our ratios, right? Ratios are also a simple, uh, simple item. Uh, one second, we go back a little and clear this slide. Okay, right. So we were here in ratios. Okay, under ratios, things like this. For example, let's say I have thousand rupees and I need to split this thousand rupees between Mr. A, B, and C to the ratio of two is to three is to five, right? Then the examiner can ask, okay, what are the values of shares that is attributed to A, B, and C? A, B, Saha, C, right? So how to split thousand rupees between A, B, and C to the ratio of two is to three is to five, right? These are very simple stuff. As the name suggests, basic maths, right? So A should get a proportion of how much? Two. Out of how many parts? You have two parts here, three parts here, and five parts here. So all together, Puta, what carry the higher thing. There are 10 parts in this, 10 parts all together to be distributed between A, B, and C, right? So A is supposed to get out of 1,000, right? Yeah. Is supposed to get two parts out of 10, right? That will give you 200 bucks, right? B is supposed to get out of 1,000, Total is 10. From that, he is supposed to get three, 300, right? Then C is supposed to get 1,000 into five upon 10, that is 500 rupees. So altogether, this is how the 1,000 has been split, right? So things like this, these ratios are a very common question in your exam paper, right? Stuff like this, and I know you guys are familiar with, right? So study these things, easy marks in your exam. Then percentages, right? For example, if I say uh, the, uh, let's say the value, value of a company, the value of a company is 100 million in 2023. With us, we should the company value with 100 million kilowatt of ilati, right? Then the examiner can say something like, okay, this value is supposed to increase by 15% during 2024, right? The company value is a working value. It's a percentage, right? 15% increment in 2024. So the examiner can ask you, okay, what should be the new value of the company in 2024? Very simple stuff, right? So 15% out of 100, that means 100 multiplied by, if you take this as a fraction, 15% is 15 upon 100, right? So your value increase would be 15 million. The new value of your company would be 115 million, right? Very simple. So, so percentages, computations like this, they have tested in your exam, right? So Buddha, please make sure when you are studying the basic mathematics section, you are very familiar with these particular bullet points. These are examiner's favorites, right? If you are familiar with these particular sub points, right? How many marks can you get? We can easily get 10 marks in your exam. You might feel like, okay, this is just 10 marks. No, this is actually 20% of your pass mark. What a pass and key are done. It's a simple game. Don't worry about this exam a lot. Right? This is AD foundation. Right? So if you are familiar with these sections, it is very easy to score marks in your exam. Right? So under business mathematics, first subtopic, basic mathematics, you have to study these items for your exam. Guaranteed, you will get 10 marks. Okay. Now, moving on to our analysis for financial mathematics for business, right? Make up a poly mark where you did this uh, interest computations, right? Or mother will have interest compute class, right? So this is that 
particular topic, right? So in this part of particular topic, Puda, as you can see, marks can go up to even 14 marks. So that is that is a substantial amount of marks if you know this topic, right? But the issue is even within financial mathematics, a topic within this financial mathematics topic, there are a whole bunch of things that we have studied in the class, right? Simple interest, compound interest, right? Effective interest rate, loan amortization, right? Sinking funds, right? Then amortization schedules. Then what else? You have learned net, profit, uh, net present value computations, NPVs, project appraisal, right? So likewise, there are so many subtopics, right? Again, what are examiner's favorites? I will tell you what they are. So what are the common areas tested? Only these four. Me hathara vitraila ma. Una da hathara. First one is loan installment computation, right? Kohama da aada loan nehe ka value ve ka dunna hama. A loan ne ka installment ne compute karan ne. How do you compute the installment of the loan? That means the amount that you pay back to the bank or whatever the financial institution, right? Let's say you go to the bank and uh, tell them, uh, please, I need a 1 million personal loan. Not a million hekka loan ne ka for personal reason, right? Then whoever the employee at the bank, right? That employee will do some computation in his calculator. Sir, you should pay the bank an installment of 35,000 rupees per month, right? So you as students under, under BMS, you are also supposed to know this computation. That is almost every time this is tested, right? So you need to know how this works, right? So for this, I am going to do a question in this session as well. May loan installment compute karna with you. I remind karana may session based on an example. Okay. Then to the there's this amortization schedule. So the amortization schedule like a kill at the loan hacker ten acre. That the loan hacker duration like a gatham. If you take the entire duration of the loan, loan amortization schedule is a table which shows you the outstanding balance of a loan over the course of the loan. Like a loan like a ten acre Ibervenaka, loan hacker outstanding balance like a pen and a statement like a loan amortization schedule like a gatham. Right? So if you are not familiar with this, if you can't remember this, or this sounds like Greek to you, definitely I invite you to go back and check the video relating to financial mathematics. We have done this amortization schedule in our recorded sessions, right? So very important, it's a favorite of the examiner. This can be tested in your exam as well. Amortization schedule, Anivarim Balaga. Okay, net present value. So in the new syllabus, Puda, this is the only project appraisal technique that is there, right? Net present value, very easy, right? So if you have been given certain cash flows of related to a particular project, right? A cash flows present value will compute current no, right? You need to compute the cash flows back to its present value. Let's say you have a investment of thousand and from this investment, you are receiving cash flows of 100, 200, 300, 400 in the future, right? Let's say this is year zero, this is year one, this is year two, this is year three, this is year four, right? You might remember these type of questions where we convert these future cash flows. May another the model provide it again? Up in the investment taker and other year zero is today, right? Up in Rupia Daha invest Kerala, up in Anikatra Hambina cash flows, Rupia senior. This year, this year, this year. In the future, we are not getting it today, right? You are receiving in the future. So the value of those monies in today's terms are the kochara patinadame cash flows. That is the present value computation, right? So net present value guaranteed question in your exam. Usually, net present value can even give you as marks as seven marks. Right? So not, it's not a tough. Question, right? Net present value, it's very easy in your level, right? They will give you the cash flow, discounting factor, the period of the investment, everything will be there. 
what you need to do is you are simply supposed to put it to the next present value format and take your answer right so definitely when you are studying financial mathematics you need to go back then familiarize yourself with the ntv computations for sure okay then simple and compound interest formulas this should be your bread and butter okola da ondarama danagan lona section natta me simple and compound interest kya this one right so for simple interest and compound interest in the class we have learned four formulas the formulas hatha koma vedaga these four are very important right let me remind you okay this will be given in your exam as well puta but i'm just giving you a briefing okay so you have simple interest i will call it si and you have compound interest ci right monada api ganagatta formulas first one is to compute the maturity value maturity value simple interest atate oa kohomada investment ekak maturity value ek compute kara compound interest atate kohomada investment ekak maturity value ek compute kara there are two formulas for this right and also there is another formula for interest right what investment ekak deela ඒ ඉන්වෙස්ට්මන්ට් එක සිම්පල් ඉන්ට්‍රස්ට් එක කම්පියුට් කරන්න කිව්වොත් කොහොමද ඒ පොලියෝවා ගණනය කරන්නේ? There's one formula for this. And there's another formula for compound interest as well. How do you compute the interest for compound using the compound interest formula, right? So there are all together 1 2 3 4 formulas හතරක් තියෙනවා. ඔය හතර එක්සැමිනර් ඕන අතකට කරකෝලා අහන්න පුළුවන්. He can just change things up. and ask any questions from simple and compound interest formulas right so remember guys in your exam if your objective is to make 50 marks panahal khada ganna ekak nan oage target ekak that is your goal definitely these four are mandatory guaranteed questions in our mind okala and paper ekak right so if you are feeling skeptical sure na whatever meka kiyana ekak so if you have any doubts you can pull up the past papers from the atu websites you can see in all the past papers you have a npv computation very easy right you have a computation for the loan interest computation loan uh, installment you will have that for sure well, you can do your own study as well right so on the financial mathematics these are the four sections that you are supposed to be familiar with right? so please focus your studies on these but by this i am again repeating i am not saying you are not supposed to study the rest of the things if it is within the syllabus the examiner can check it right but these are his favorites right my favorites to the nagade and that will be very helpful for you right so in the exam how many marks can you get from these four areas you can get at least 14 marks right up to 14 marks actually around 10 marks like no 10 ak 10 4 ak wage wada ganna puluwa guarantee okay so even this puta you don't have to uh, make any notes if you want of course you can make any notes i will be sharing this presentation with you so no you no need to worry about that okay so this is our second topic ape syllabus ekey devani topic ekey yatade wa paadam karanna wa sections thama me tika okay right moving into the third topic financial operative measures for business a very standard topic kiyanne hama welayema ahanne ekama prashnaya me tika right so e prashne lagunu 30 ak kahana adala lagunu 10 ak thiyenne 10 marks in every paper under question number 3 tum veni prashne lakunu 10 ak guaranteed dham wenawa financial operative measures wale okena tahan ne mona ho mulu topic ekaka wane me okena tahan ne menna me set ekak right mona dahan dewa under financial operative measures for business you need to know how to derive the total functions right mulu shrita total functions kohomada derive karanna e total functions puta mama metana deela thiyena tr tc and tp right so what is tr tr stands for puta total revenue total revenue etakota business se ga mulu aadayama revenue kiyanne aadayama ne business se ga mulu aadayama represent karana function ekak mokadda kiyala hawa thora den magak wenna theory wale api igena gatta that is price multiplied by the quantity t multiplied by q right so this is the formula that we learned in the class right then TC formula. What is TC? May they be any good? TC is for the total cost, right? Total cost. Take a look at that. TC is equal to 
variable cost plus the fixed cost, right? Again, a business cost elements, they guy. What are the variable cost or the fixed cost, right? You might think, no, no, sir, we have studied something like semi variable cost in economics. In economics, we have semi variable, not semi fixed cost. Now, even if there's a semi variable cost or a semi fixed cost, still you can split it. If you have a fixed component, a variable component, right? So if you analyze the cost behavior of any organization, they can be broadly classified into either fixed cost or variable cost. Total cost. You can compute the total cost of your business based on these elements, right? So this is the TC function that we have studied in the class. Then what is the task? Function that you studied in the class, total total profit function, TP, total profit, right? That is TP. From the TP, how that? TP ki ane ko derive karane. TP is equal to TR minus TC, total total revenue minus total cost. Very simple, right? Agar aada ani bhi adam adu kar hamane the profit tagi thoru hai, right? To take your income statement. In your accounting studies, you have studied this. Income statement, take a got the statement of uh, comprehensive income. If you got the well, income making cost elements, in, in a simple theoretical way, that is how it works, right? There are many cost elements that you did up from the revenue. So, whatever is remaining, the statement, take a computer, profit, take a it's the same logic. If you take the total revenue and deduct the total cost from that, you are getting the total profit. Simple as that, right? The got may functions to na ani wari mo compute karna video that I'm going to know how to derive them and how to do computations based on this, right? That is very important for your exam, right? So these are the total functions. Then to the the marginal functions. The marginal functions to na examina test karna wama tamar. Definitely. For sure, you will see questions relating to MR, MC, and MP as well. So, what is MR, MC, and MP? Okay. If you take the total revenue function, total cost function, and the total profit function, again, total functions to na gatta malamai, me functions to na or differentiate karo, avakalane karo, you are getting. MR, MC, and MP, right? That is MR, MC, and MP. This is marginal revenue. This is marginal cost. This is marginal profit, right? So, what the total revenue function make a differentiate for a marginal revenue. Total cost function make a differentiate for a marginal cost taker. Total profit function make a differentiate for a marginal profit function, right? Enna, what do you need to remember? In your examination, they are going to check differentiation, right? So in your class, in our class, Buddha, in the recorded session, we have studied this and we have learned how to differentiate a function, right? But in this particular session, on the targeted questions, Buddha, I will remind you how to do this conversion. Total function, api marginal function ne ga convert karna video me arrows wali me denote karla dena process ekak buta we are going to do example today also right so you can refresh your memory right then buta you have two other concepts that you need to remember for your exam profit maximization and break even point two very important concepts for your exam right okay what do you need to remember you have profit maximization and you have the Break even point, right? Two concepts, right? Working exam make a word profit maximization make a hoyan make a if the examiner asks you to compute the profit maximization, what are the conditions? MR equals MC. Okay, Antika Ada and Antika Pirivata Samana win MR equals MC. Oh, Emanetta, what to make a hand of MP is equal to zero. Your marginal profit has to be zero. So you have two conditions here. Conditions they got here, right? Echo MR equals MC, Natta MP equals zero. This is how we compute the profit maximization. The conditions they get profit maximization. Then coming into the break-even point, right? 
break even point also puta there are two conditions you have to remember for your exam what are the conditions your total revenue is supposed to be equal to your total cost right this is condition number 1 right or the other condition is the total profit should be equal to how much zero pagi labe bindu venna ona etane diyo age business ek operate karne break even point ek right so if your total revenue and total cost is the same that means your business is at the break even point right pai thanda ko mehena wage business ekak thiyena lama e business ekke wage income ekak thiyena 100000 lakhs you have 100000 income that's your revenue right then your expenditure is also 100000 that means your income and the expenses are the same right so that means your business is running in what the break even point why in a break even like labat na padut na there's there's no profit or a loss you are on the fence wa beta udeng so that is break even point a break even point ta ka wa compute karanna na what you need to do either you have to take the condition as your total revenue is equal to total cost that is condition number 1 and what is the other condition your total profit is supposed to be zero wa ge labe bindu ana total profit ta ka zero ana etakadak wa ine break even point ta ge right me deka 100% guarantee wage exam ekak ahanawa mai right e even if they don't check break even point this profit maximization condition in the make guarantee guarantee the new exam for sure right any pass paper you will have the profit maximization point menna me conditions deka dala gana kadanna thiyenawa ma ka right we are going to discuss one not to worry and if you have any further doubts or any uh, you can't remember the theory section of it please go back and refer to your recorded sessions about these four topics all right hari puta itta kota me sections waling what exam me ke lakuna kiya ganna puluwan guaranteed 10 marks lakuna 10 ak sure and sure me hatara puluwan na wata ganna puluwan ma thama exam right so see how we are adding marks then how lakuna ekatu kar gatta vidiya denna ne 10 14 10 ah oh me ekatu karala baluwa you can easily target and take 50 marks in your exam right so focus your studying efforts in these four all right okay let's move on guys we laga topic ke kada data representation and descriptive measures data representation data presentation and descriptive measures the make api igena gatta dewal monada what are the things we learned in uh, data presentation and descriptive measures you might remember things like uh, mean median mode and what variance standard deviation and coefficient of variation these are the things that we have discussed in the class on the data descriptive measures right let me remind you and another card now okay so what are the two types of uh, descriptive measures we have learned in the class there are things called measures of central tendency measures of central tendency wage data set ekey cent eka gena adahasak denna wage data set ekey cent eka kotenada kiyana eka represent karana type ekey measurements tunak thiyena there are three what are the three measures of central tendency we have learned this in the class number one is mean number two is mod then you have something called the media mathya madhyasthya madhyanya singhala right so these are the three measures of central tendency puta that you have to remember right then there is another type of computation or there is another set of computations that you have studied that is called measures of dispersion measures of dispersion right වගේ data set එක පැතිරීම් distribution එක පෙන්නන type එකේ measurements. ඒතර again three ම. what are the three? number one is variance. number two is standard deviation. standard deviation then you have coefficient of coefficient of 
variation. All right. So these are the three measures, measures of dispersion that we have learned in the class. Right. So this is testable in the exam for sure. Right. So please remember when you are discussing or studying this particular section, your computations you have to align with measures of temporal tendency and measures of dispersion. Under those particular types, you need to be familiar with these particular computations. Is it the equation exam Normally, you will see this in your exam paper, whatever the uh, equations that you're supposed to use. So it's a simple matter of substituting whatever the data that they have given to the examination question and the equation given in the paper, right? So this is the overview of what we did. So this is descriptive measures. Descriptive measures were Data representation, data presentation key in a section, we have learned different types of charts. Can you remember? Bar charts, pie charts, histograms, right? Uh, then uh, what else did you discuss? Okay, under bar charts, we learned the many different types of bar charts. Simplify, simple bar charts, compound bar charts, multiple bar charts. You remember these types of charts? Ah, data presentation killer, can, right? You remember this topic, I suppose. Okay, then make it, what are the things that they have tested in our exams? What are the examiner's favorites? Okay, these are the things you need to remember. Those six computations, even from those six puta, or examination ke ahan me, in the me paha, right? Mean, mod, median, standard deviation, and coefficient of variation. Okay. Me paha tama, me pass papers pahe ma halati. Kiwe, me pass papers paha gato puta, me paha vitarma ya halati. To got a variance ke ne compute karana villane. They have not tested in the recent past how to compute the variance of a data set, right? Even within these five types, puta, five computations, most frequently, mean, that is your expa, mean, nickel. this is your mean. Then they have checked, tested the MO, that is mod, right? Then MD, media, that is puta single in madhya state, right? Ah, oye tuna puta wag exam meke hamo vilayam check karna tuna, right? So in this case, what you need to remember is you need to focus your study specially for mean more than media, right? So in today's session, I will also do a computation for this particular aspect as well, so you can memorize and refresh your memory relating to these computations, right? So make sure you know how to substitute the numbers, not to, not to study the formula itself because formula will be given in your exam, right? You don't need to memorize this. What you need to know is how to substitute the data from your question to the formula. If formula get up, the data substitute how to put it to the relevant places. That is what you need to be familiar with, right? So that's, that's the uh, expectation of the exam, right? Then also, Buddha, again, relating to uh, data presentation, you remember those uh, things that I told, told you about, the, the charts, different types of charts the examiner has, right? So, that's all. You know what a pie chart is, right? That's the, uh, this thing. If you take the circle, right? The circle, like, a cake, a swelling different different uh, data represent you can represent different things in this circle right so that is a pie chart that's the only type they have not tested bar charts compound bar charts multiple bar charts histograms mm -hmm. no so it's in the syllabus but not tested in your past papers right so if you are running short of time i know you have to study many things right you are not just taking a maths exam you are doing accounting you are doing economics you have to learn other topics right there are many things to do in those also so if you are running short of time what's the chart you need to be familiar with you need to be familiar with this one pie chart right that's the most uh, frequently tested uh, data representation technique right okay right if you are familiar with this stuff how many marks can you get you can get up to 
14 marks in your exam. I mean, how hard it is to get a full one. Approximately 10 marks. Minimum 10. What a good one. Minimum is it to go out a full one. If you memorize these things. Okay. I hope you got the understanding about this particular topic. What you need to focus on. Okay. Moving on, guys. So, topic number five. So, topic number five. We get into comparing two quantitative variables. Comparing two quantitative variables. Okay. What did we learn under this topic? Put them comparing two quantitative variables. Can you remember this topic where we learned about x variable, y variable? We called the x variable the independent variable, and y variable was the dependent variable. Then we learned the types of relationships between these three types of variables. Right? What are they? Positive correlation, negative correlation, and zero correlation. Right? Then we learned how to compute the correlation coefficient right we denoted this as simple r right then after that we learned forecasting for forecasting we call that analysis as regression analysis right regression analysis occurred today what did we learn the least square regression line method least square regression line method right So under that, what was the formula? Y equals a plus b x. Do you remember this this stuff? My topic ke kamata gaye nahi. Okay. So under this topic, again, how many marks can you get in your exam? You can get ten marks in your exam for sure. Under question number what? Question number four. May set again. There are so many things here also, right? So many different sub topics. What are the things they are checking in the exam? Because only one thing, right? What is it? Least square regression line. How to compute the least square regression line? For sure, guaranteed. Ten marks in your exam, right? Least square regression line. Can me y equals a plus b x k? Na me function ne ka develop karan na thein. You need to develop this function, right? Based on the data set given in your exam paper, right? If you know how to develop this, and based on that, if you can do a forecast, again forecast type pull one na. Ten marks guaranteed in your exam. Not the rest of the stuff. There are more stuff in this topic. Eh? This is not all the entirety of the topic. You have these uh, free hand method, different types of correlations, how they plot, how we plot this into scatter diagrams, right? How to interpret the correlation coefficient. So many things, right? But in all your past papers, all in past past papers, perhaps got to the Bahai Mahalati ni minimum ni. So why not? Maybe the pattern will repeat. Maybe July or whatever they test an exam paper again. Maybe they will just the same thing. So be prepared, right? This square regression line. So today in our session, I will also remind you how to do a question for this square regression line. Like how then we do? Man, what are it? How to call them? I will give you a background of this. How to pitch the question? Okay. So with this, as I explained previously, you can get ten marks in your paper, right? Okay. Apne higher any topic ke baad the one before the last topic, right? Probability and its applications. Probability ki wahan apne karte the aara hum nahi. Probability is a very uh, confusing area for most of the students, right? But uh, I hope when uh, when you are watching my videos, hopefully some of these uh, ambiguities got cleared out. Hopefully. So in here, under probability, also Buddha, we learn various types of probability computations, right? If I brief you through the uh, laws of probability, what are they? Additive model, multiplicative, sorry, additive law, multiplicative law. Then we learned about the tree diagrams, right? Then we learned about the normal curve, the standard normal curve, probability computations, expected value. Likewise, there are. Many different uh, computations that we learned in the class, right? So this question will always be under question six. Probability can question hand question six again. A question six again. Antima hariya thama meka thiye. Towards the very end of your paper, you will find these probability questions, right? So the marks you can obtain can range from six marks to twelve marks. Like no higher, dollar higher, tadra pramana, kwaada ganne pula meke, right? So what are the things you are going to uh, you need to study to secure these marks? Only these items, right? If you take all the past papers, the five past papers that are here, 
may lakunu dola hana ta lakunu haya whatever the number of marks that have been tested have been tested only from these particular three points what are the three laws of probability right laws of probability what are the two additive and multiplicative for this I, you can watch in my video i have done a nice diagram to help you to figure out your question what question ne gak dunna ma laws of probability wali i have given you a diagram as to which path you are supposed to follow to get to your answer right so if you are not familiar with your laws of your probability please re watch the session related to probability neka anivaryam ba check karanna ona hari be familiar with this it will be there in your exam right then expected value uh, it's a very simple computation but for whatever the reason examiner is very uh, interested in checking it neka hamu velewa hana expected value with it right it's an easy one i will also do a question today for you to uh, for you to get an understanding about the expected value then the standard normal curve computation what is the standard normal curve do you remember the curves that we draw like this in the meva geoma tak in the me section ne ega surface area ek hewa z values really you remember this stuff right guys if you can't remember you will have to go back and rewatch the video for sure right so this is the standard normal curve type of questions right अंडरस्टैंडिंग mandatory under probability what are three laws of probability expected value computation and the standard normal curve computations menna me set ekke maata lakunu up to 12 marks you can expect in your exam right okay then the last section that is for index numbers and forecasting right index numbers and forecasting even, even though it is uh, it is uh, it has a big weight in your syllabus right it does not seem to be uh, tested in the second part that means section b and c oda matha kadi puta sections tibani a b c kela tuna matha kai ne edaman kalin oda kiwa okay puta me b and c sections wala the section that we are analyzing in detail today they are not very keen to test these index numbers and forecasting section in detail at least in these five past papers wage alu syllabus ekak meke ecchara ma test karana area ekak ne right even when they have tested in july and jan these two papers eke tahala diyena lamai menna me index numbers deka vitarai these are the two things they have asked what are the two laspers price index and the laspers quantity index right this this uh, index computation right so we have learned like uh, 16 index numbers in our class we learn price indexes quantity indexes value indexes under those we learn different types of uh, indexes five each right uh, in some cases it got split to multiple branches so as a result approximately we learned around 16 index numbers in the class right they can check everything but their favorites are laspers price index and the laspers quantity index these are the two right so if you can study all 16 very good But you, if you are not in a position to study all sixteen, at least these two. You know, maybe they got what? They are going to know. You know these two. I think you can score like maybe four to, I mean, three to four marks for sure in your exam, right? So this is how you need to focus your studies. Okay, right. So let me in your uh, in your books, you can uh, may take these notes. or you can refer to this uh, set uh, this uh, pdf file i will share this presentation with you so you can study your this uh, study and put your best efforts into these particular sections okay right so i um, i hope this is uh, clear to you guys right so this is my analysis okay all right Okay, so I hope you guys understood what are the things you need to study to get through the exam. Okay, now I will take you to 
target question discussion. Okay, this is important, right? Then we are going to examine the favorites. Right? Now we know what the favorites are. So from that, I have chosen some specific questions to discuss today briefly, right? Uh, not, uh, not very complicated or lengthy questions. Just for you to grasp what type of question the examiner can test, right? So the target questions, all right. So I have given you a summary here, guys. For under each of the syllabus areas, the seven syllabus areas, what are the target questions I'm going to discuss today, right? For basic mathematics for business, guys, it's, it's too simple, right? I don't want to waste your precious time in discussing a question for uh, ratios, for example, right? Over that makeup me. Just watch that uh, two hour or three hour video. You can get an understanding about this. Right? You don't need to uh, put a lot of weight on basic maths. You have learned maths for like 11 years now. Because it is a maths, you can learn. Basic maths, experts love in the US must be experts in basic maths now. Right? 11 years of experience. That's, that's a lot, right? Okay, basic maths, I'm not going to do any targeted questions as such. Okay. But for the rest of the items here, from item number two to seven, there are specific things I'm going to discuss. Okay, for financial mathematics, I will remind you how to do the loan installment computation. Examiner's favorite. I will teach you how it works out. Then under financial operative measures, profit maximization, guaranteed question in your exam. I will teach you how to pitch a question like that. Then under data presentation and descriptive measures, as I explained previously, there are six different computations that you should be familiar with. Even within those, I will remind you how to do the mean, mod, and the median. These are the favorites that the examiner has checked, okay? Then comparing to uh, quantitative variables, as I told previously, they have always checked the regression line. Y equals A plus BX function next alternative with here. Always test in that. Okay, fine. I will teach you how to finish a question based on regression line analysis. Okay. Then for probability and its applications, I'm going to remind you how to do the expected value computation. Okay. And index numbers and forecasting, I will just remind you how to do the last year's past index. So this is my plan. So how many questions are we going to discuss today? Target questions? Six questions. All right. So this will, I think, help you to. Number one, uh, remember or uh, memorize, refresh your memory relating to these particular topics. And number two, these are very favorite questions, very famous questions that are tested in your exams. You can leverage this knowledge into your exam hall as well, okay? So let's get started. All right. Question one, calculation of the loan installment. Pohamada api loan installment ta compute karana, right? Okay, this is the function that we have learned in the class. Installment equals loan value divided by cumulative dis dis uh, discounting factor. The, the word that I have used for the abbreviation is CDF. Okay, so I will lose the blue color pen. All right. So again, installment take compute ka nalamai, what is the function? Neka, loan neka divide ka nona CDF, okay. cumulative discounting factor. Then make cumulative discounting factor. How this uh, this particular item, the denominator here. How do you compute this? You can compute this with a, either using this formula. The formula can use a lot of compute kanapula. At that, I compute kanapula. Cumulative discounting factor table. So there's a table given to you in the exam, which you can use to find the cumulative discounting factor, right? Well, approaches they can own a video cutter or to me CDF can denominate a harm to law. The loan value give, will be given in your exam. You know, the unknown and umbeka, it will be given in your paper, right? Loan make a picture of the killer again, the installment take a computer on right? So in the exam paper, in the question, it will tell you what the loan value is. It could be 1 million, 2 million, whatever the figure that you have to put to the top and it should be divided by the CDF. That is what you need to do, okay? Right. So I will show you an example on how this whole thing can be worked out. Okay. All right. Uh, one more thing. You remember this part? Alternatively, you can use a CDF table. Uh, this is what the CDF table looks like. Well, exam make a CDF table. Right. So 
like this the rows represent the years avurudu ganathama metana thiyenne right and this section columns represent the percentage wage interest rate ekak thama me athata thiyen right anyways you don't need to wrap your head around much based on example i will teach you how to refer this table it's very easy okay right so it is this is my question okay let's read it a person has obtained a personal loan of rupees 2 million at an interest rate of 10% per annum to be repaid in 10 years 8 years calculate the annual installment value of the loan right think this is you me wagela itanna for whatever the reason let's say to buy a small car you need a personal loan of 2 million right the bank tells you your interest rate is 10% per annum avurudd dekara 100 ka 10 ka interest rate takkama bank ekak charge kara okay and you are planning to repay the bank over how many years 8 years avurudu atakin thama meka repay karanna fine how to compute the installment avurudd dekara kiya gaane da gewanne you might think ayyo sir oka simple ne anna mehema ne oka hadanno na kela mata mehema giyanna thula 2 million divided by ोन So let me put it here. So your installment, I will call it INS installment equals loan divided by CDF cumulative discounting factor, right? Okay. So how much is my loan, Buddha? Maybe loan ne ke amount ne ke? Or agi baro in ne ke two million. So to the top, I am putting two million. That on na two million mama liwa. And now this has to be divided by what? the cumulative discounting factor right so the cumulative discounting factor with as i explained previously there are two ways to compute this and i make a hadana vidhi dekak thiyena ekak formula ekta or using the cdf table cdf table lekin meka gannat pulo hari i will teach you how to compute the cdf using the ctf cdf table first cumulative discounting factor table lekin use karna vidhi man kiyala den right okay So this is your CDF table. This is what they will give you in your you to you in your exam as well, right? So how to compute the cumulative discounting factor using this table? Okay. If you go back to the questions, Kuta, what is my interest rate? Ten percent, right? Okay. So from here, let me change the pen color. Okay. From here, the percentages are given in these columns. My columns are the percentages. Then. इंटरसेप्ट मैंने मैं कहता हूँ आप उतार सीडीएफ करो, so how much is my CDF? मैं मान सर्कल करे, हाँ, that is five point three three four. You can take it for three decimal places, no problem. You can even take four, whatever you are okay with. Usually me as a practice, I use only three decimal places for my CDF, right? You can use the same thing. So मैं five point three three four की है ना फिगर का पुता, मैं ना मैं तेरे तो दान as your CDF. Five point three three four. So what's my answer? Here the my answer. If you take your calculator, two million. Okay, divided by five point three three four. You are getting uh, two million one two three four five six seven six zeros. Your installment value would be three hundred and seventy four thousand. Nine hundred and fifty seven fifty three. Ah, this should be your installment value. Again, ne, our group dekara laksha, two laksha hatta hatra daaga ne. Okay, installment ke yaagne ando. 
you have to pay eight times. By that time, your loan is done. This is a computation the examiner is checking, right? So I taught you how to get the CDF using the CDF table, right? Now I will teach you how to use the formula to get this figure, right? If you're familiar with the CDF table, Buddha, you don't have to even worry about the formula. But for formality, I will just show you how the how this figure, 5.334 figure, how you can derive using this formula, making a formula, this one, right? Okay, how to compute this? All right, let me show you. CDF one divided by rate. How much is my interest rate put in this question? 10%, you remember? 10%. Ah. Then within brackets, one minus, one divided by one plus R. One plus R can put my interest rate take it. R can rate take. Okay. One plus R ten percent to the power n. How many periods are there? How do the key again the loan again? Eight years. Ne? Aina, to the power eight. If you simplify this, your answer should be how much? Five point three three four. Right? With an order of answer, you may see the figure. I come in the making of ten. Right? Now the next question is how to simplify this using the calculator right it's very easy first and foremost i'm going to type 1.1 to the power 8 and take the answer for that 1.1 can be the 1 plus 10 percent 1 plus 10 percent can 1.1 10 percent can 0 0.1 0 0.1 plus 1 is 1.1 to the power 8 and the main area you're going to make here this section right then that should be taken and one divided by answer. The answer ka paragana. answer ka bedan. See, you have one here. From that, your previous answer should be divided, right? So you are typing one divided by answer. Okay. Then you take, press the equal sign again. Then eking a answer ka do and no. You need to deduct this full answer from one. It can go full like I do in normal. That means one minus answer. You have a button called answer next to your equal sign. I hope you remember this stuff. Okay. You do it like this. One minus answer. Then this full answer should be divided by 10%. Okay. One divided by 10% kill the nearly. In summary, what happens is this answer that you get within brackets. In brackets, what you have to answer, what 10% will be done with. Rather than saying 10%, what you can do? You can say divided by 0 0.1, right? So you can say now answer divided by 0 0.1. Then you should get this particular figure, right? Namahadana, right? 1.1 to the power 8. You are getting answer of 2.14 something, right? Then 1 divided by answer and press the equal sign. You are getting 0.466. Okay. Then one willing answer I thought do Then I am saying one minus answer equals sign. Okay. What's the last step? This answer has to be divided by 0 0.1. This answer divided by 0 0.1. You are getting exactly this figure. Or they know 5.334926 something, right? So this is your answer. Okay. So not to worry. By any chance, even if you can't use this formula and take the proper answer, you have this table in your exam. So not, not to worry much, right? The table again, what answer by CDF factor. So you don't need to worry. Okay. So this is the answer for your first question, right? So I hope that is clear to you. All right. Then coming into uh, profit maximization. Okay. So my profit maximization conditions the Calling explain kara. MR equals MC or MP equals zero. That is how profit maximization uh, should be derived, right? Then the profit maximization, this also I explained to you. If you differentiate your total revenue function, you are getting your marginal revenue function. If you are differentiating your total cost function, you are getting the marginal cost function. If you are differentiating your total profit function, you are getting the marginal profit function right so total a cup take you may total functions all these are totals right in total functions through differentiation you can convert to its corresponding margin 
the margin negative convert karanna pula right so you need to know this differentiation process right so let me remind you how this works using an example right this is also a guaranteed question in your exam profit maximization right okay this is the question this is uh this is from a directly from a past paper actually it's very easy let me teach you how this works all right let's read the total revenue function and the total cost function of a product a is given by tr equals this and pc equals this where x is the number of units produced me function ne ke puta me x kela tiyenne ena number of units quantity is denoted by letter x okay so based on these two functions tr and pc what are you supposed to do calculate the number of units where the profit is maximized profit ta ka maximize hona point ta ka tama han right how to do this there are two options nebuta as i explained to you the profit maximization happens when your mr equals mc or mp equals 0 right okay then based on these two functions what is the fastest way for you to reach this particular section within tender thena fastest na vidhi ema kada what is the best way you have first condition or second condition first condition seems to be faster right because you have the revenue function and you have the cost function right e deko wa differentiate kora to at mr and mc hanna puluwan ne you can compute mr and mc if you differentiate those two total functions right okay if i write it here this is what i'm trying to say right so in your paper or in your exam question you have the tr function given tr ke ne kada dila dena total revenue ekak ඊට අමතරව පුතා ටෝටල් කොස්ට් ෆන්ක්ෂන් එකත් වට දීලා තියෙනවා රයිට් එතකොට TR ඩිෆරෙන්ෂියේට් කරලා වට MR හදන්න පුළුවන් MC TC ඩිෆරෙන්ෂියේට් කරලා වට MC හදන්න පුළුවන් එතකොට වට MR ඉක්වල්ස් MC මෙතඩ් එක යූස් කරන්න පුළුවන් නේද මෙතන you can use this method to get the answer are you clear right so based on the equations that the examiner has given you can decide what is the fastest way for you to reach the answer right so in this case it is mr equals mc right so let me show you how to do this conversion now kohoma da api me total revenue ekai total cost ekai me functions deka margin ekata convert karana right this is how it works okay let me write the tr function first tr is equal to what 20x plus 3x square okay 20x plus 3x square okay this is the one word right? okay so make a puta or differentiate color what an answer come up what's the answer you get you are supposed to get the marginal revenue total revenue ne ka differentiate karama what an marginal revenue ne ka fine so let's see how to compute that okay so first what i am going to write i am going to differentiate what on differentiate karna tr that's why i say this is dtr right divided by dx what is my differentiation base x right because the unknown factor here is x right okay how to take the differentiation answer metana puta if you take 20x the power here is 1 a power eka wa isara ta gena multiplication eka pidiyara you bring this power is there in your expression to the front as a multiplication so 1 multiplied by 20x okay 20x ke na ke hema ma liyena me thiyena power eke ekak kadu karana 1 to the power 1 minus 1 kalin tibba power eka 1 ne e 1 walin o adu karana 1 right this is how you should do the differentiation right and then what you need to do you have to write the differentiation expression for the remainder as well right what is the remainder mudan thiyena anik kotasa mokada 3x squared thiyena kotasa a kotasa puta thiyena power ekama kada 2 2 to 2 multiplied by me 2 kiyana ke isaraata gena multiplication ekak widihata 3x kiyana ke hemma walena thiyena power ekak ekak adu karana you deduct 1 from the power that you already have right so this is how differentiation works again okay? if this is like rocket science to you if you can't remember what the hell did i do just now definitely you will have to go back and refresh your memory based on your theory session right these are definite questions in your exam if you can't remember this that's a problem right so you will have to go back and check 
So if you're familiar with this, this is very simple, right? There's a pattern to do this, right? What do we do first? Power ka isarata ke na multiplication na kithi hai tar. Me one ke na ka dam me isarata vila thi na one multiplied by ke na, right? Okay. Twenty x expression ne ke hima miliye na. Thi na power ke ka kati karna. That's all, right? So if you simplify this particular expression now, you will get your answer as m r on the marginal revenue. Answer ko ata dhenge na, right? Okay, then one multiplied by twenty x is twenty x. Twenty x mane putaye ka. Ek hai power ka kiye the. To the power zero, one minus uh, one can is to the power zero, right? Okay. Plus two into three x is six x to the power two minus one can to the power one can, right? Meka thava do data to a simplify karo. If you simplify this even further, right? X to the power zero is how much? X to the power zero is one, right? Ona ma number hai ka power zero kyan ne puta? Me hamay ke ma answer ka ekar, right? Five to the power zero, ten to the power zero, hundred to the power zero. Me hamay ke maan se kya dekho ta? Me hamay ke maan se one, right? Ah hai na twenty x to the power zero kya ne kya dekho? Twenty x to the power zero means just twenty. Twenty multiplied by one, right? That means just twenty. Okay. Plus six x to the power one. Okay, me power one ne ko a saman ne liya na dekho ta? Aate ni kam liya na bola me ka kya kya dekho? Six x kya liya na bola, right? Ab me hamita na dekho. Mangu aate kya na? Puta write the number five hundred. Or fancy ya kine ka mehe man eliyan. Or kaudha fancy ya palave ni balay ke eliyan or class. Do you write to the power one? You usually don't write this far, right? So therefore, we don't need to write that. We are just instead of writing six x to the power one, we are just saying six x. Ah, this is your marginal revenue function. Okay, right. Then I need to do the same thing for my cost function as well, right? Then my cost ka Differentiate kalla on no matter pending, right? Okay. If you go back to the question now, there's my cost function. Me then four x minus five hundred x plus thousand five hundred. Okay. Let me write that. This is my uh, TC total cost. What's the function we have? 4x squared minus 500x, 4x squared minus 500x uh, plus 1,500. You can take those ones here, pick it in now, right? This is correct, 4x squared minus 500x plus 1,500. Okay, right. Let's differentiate. Okay, other than differentiate, can we have to put that? Total cost function, like a DTC. Divided by, right? What's my differentiation base? Dx. Me patti thi an unknown factor x ne puta. Ekoni sa mangle na d t c divided by d x. Differentiation base is x, right? This is the terminology that is being used. Okay. Then, what's the power here puta? Me then thi na power ekam ka the palave ni expression ne ki if you just take this part, me na me part te gato me ke thi na power ekam ka the two ne. Two ki ene ko isarat ke na multiplication na kudi hai. Two multiplied by, right? Then you take four x, right? Me four x ki ene ko dasa hima maliyan, right? Thi ene power ka two, the power you have is two. Two minus one, thi ene power ke ka kado karna. That's the process, right? Okay. Then I am going to differentiate this second part. Then me ko man differentiate kar. Alright? Me then thi ene power ka ekka puta. Even though we don't write it, this is five minus five hundred x to the power one. Right. Okay. How to differentiate this? Okay. One multiplied by five hundred x to the power one minus one. Right. Eka isra hat ke na multiplication na kpe dete. Five hundred x. I am going to write it as it is. Eka hima maliye na. Ti na power eka one one minus one. Right. That is the differentiation of minus five hundred x to the power one. Right. Then puta this thousand five hundred. This is a constant, right? This is a fixed figure. So for that, the differentiation is how much? Zero. We have learned this in our class. That means, put a think hundred, five hundred, hundred thousand. We have a fixed number here. Differentiation result is what? Differentiation result is zero. We have learned this in our class. So in this case, uh, this thousand five hundred is a constant, and therefore. 
the differentiation result you are going to mark it as mark it as uh, zero right okay then you will see the final answer is mc then we differentiate karagana putta tc kiyana function ekak right make a uh, differentiation result ekak thowata ganna puluwa 2 multiplied by 4x is 8x to the power 1 2 minus 1 kiyana 1 okay minus 500x see 1 multiplied by uh, 500 is 500x to the power 0 this zero, I'm not going to write. Yeah, I'm going to plus zero. Okay, like you don't need this. You get rid of it, right? Then you, if you simplify this further, Buddha, your answer is 8x minus 500. That's it, right? May to the power 1, you don't write this to the power 1 here. And x to the power 0, as I explained previously, x to the power 0, okay, answer comes 1. Again, 500, one will multiply gram or nikama 500. So that is what I have put here, right? So this is your final answer for marginal cost MC, right? Then, profit maximization, MR equal when donum ketan, MC equal when donum. So in your profit maximization, MR is equal to MC. Where did I get this? See, MR equals MC. Open up a condition. So for that, now I'm going to substitute, right? MR is 20 plus 6x. So I'm writing it here. 20 plus 6x equals MC is how much? This one, see? 8x minus 500, right? So if you simplify this expression, I will bring this 6x to this side, right? plus 6x when it goes beyond the equation mark, it becomes negative, right? 8x minus 6x. This minus 500, I'm going to put to this side, right? That makes it plus 500, right? Minus 500, if you push it to the next side, it becomes positive, these are basics, right? So this becomes 20 plus 500. What's your final answer? 2x is equal to 520. X is equal to how much? 520 divided by 2. Right? I will write the answer here. 520 divided by 2, you are getting 260. Just as that, right? So X is equal to 260. Where X is the number of units produced, right? Or produce current on the units profit maximize and profit maximize and units this year had a cut and loan. That is a question, right? So Buddha, this is a very important computation for your exam, right? So make sure you know the in and out of this computation, right? It's a simple logic. When you are differentiating, I didn't teach you many theories for differentiation. I only teach you one formula for differentiation. Even if you are learning differentiation, let's say in a mathematics perspective, wow, how the hell is Maths course, if you are if you are doing some university maths course, differentiation is a full-on topic. This is grade 13 maths, right? If you learn it in that sense, you will learn like 10, 15 different differentiation theories, right? I didn't teach you anything. I didn't teach you any of those stuff. I only gave you one formula, right? Let's let's study that. It's more than sufficient for your exam, right? A comma theory can tell question like I do, right? So make sure you are familiar with this one equation that will guarantee you 10 marks, right? So why not try it, right? We can do this, it's very simple, okay? So this is a very, uh, very simple question that you can attempt in your exam. This will give you around 10 marks, right? So you can say, sir, okay, go it in the higher. There's another second part in this question. I didn't put it here, but for explanation purposes, I just took this part there they have tested the profit maximization aspect of it, right? So this, this section will give you around 10 marks, you or take, okay? Right, so I hope that question is also clear to you. Okay, so let me clear the notions in all these slides. Okay, this is also fine. I hope you have taken your notes in this case. I can give you the answer for all this, so not to worry, okay? 
All right. Okay. Question number three. Calculation of the mean mod than the median. Uh, Buddha, as I explained to you, these three types of computations, mean mod than the median, these three, we call them as measures of central tendency. Right? Measures of central tendency. Right? So for measures of central tendency, we need to learn this for two different types of frequency distributions, right? For UFG, UFG means ungrouped frequency distribution, right? Where there are no uh, intervals, right? What are the intervals? Intervals, class intervals. Ah. If your data set does not have class intervals, that is what? An ungrouped frequency distribution. Frequency distribution in a UFG again, right? For ungrouped frequency distributions. And this is what? This is grouped frequency distributions. Group frequency distributions. Okay. So that is called as GFP. I just use that abbreviation. Okay. So if your data set has class intervals, Kanti Pramkara Tiranamwagi data set take and ekata bikina group frequency distribution data. Right. This section is applicable if your question is like that, right? But if your question data set does not have class intervals in your frequency distributions, that is called ungrouped. Group karla na kila pakiya. Ito koto wa use karando min na main function set type. Is that clear, right? So for me, there are two different functions. If your data set is ungrouped, you need to use this function. If your data set is grouped, you have to use this function. It's the same pretty much, right? In this particular case, for mode, there's no formula for ungrouped frequency distributions, but for group frequency distribution, there is a formula, right? Then for median, you can compute for ungrouped frequency distribution using this formula. For group frequency distribution, you can use this formula. Right? So this is how it works, all right? So please, uh, take a note of these equations and remember if the examiner is testing any of this stuff, he should give you the formula, right? So I don't see a scenario where they, they will expect you to memorize these formulas. These are there in the back of your paper. A past paper of Karan Balan Buddha, in the very end of your past paper, you will see these formulas, right? So if they are checking any or testing any of this stuff, they should give you the formula ID, right? Okay. So now I will just explain to you in simple terms how to compute these three. Okay, right. So let's go to a very simple example. All right. Okay, so this is your data set, right? May data set take a wheel of water, Kena Buddha, compute the mean, media, sorry, mod and media. That is X bar, M O, and M D. Right? Why compute karana gila gina? May data set again. Right? Let's say this is a question given in your exam. Right? Buddha, first and foremost, what you need to do before you attempt your question number three, you should, re you should be able to distinguish between what? Grouped frequency distributions and ungrouped frequency distribution. Buddha, make it gila gina data set again. Grouping ni pak pila gina. Do you see any grouping here? Do you see any class intervals? No, oh, there are no class intervals here, right? In your X column, you see fixed numbers. Bindu, Eka, Deka, Tuna, Hatara, 0 to 4. You have fixed numbers here. There are There is no class intervals here, right? There are no class intervals. Okay. So what's the type here? What's the type of this data set? This is ungrouped. This is ungrouped, right? If that's the case, make ungrouped none. Mean, median, and mode. What is the column you have to refer to? This particular column. Is that clear? I hope it is clear, right? First, you need to distinguish. Mama, deal karna data set take a type. What's the type of the data set, right? So in this particular example, it is very obvious that this is ungrouped, right? Okay. Within ungrouped, first we need to compute what? The mean. Okay. I will teach you how to work out the mean here. And make a mean right? Okay. We take the mean. I'm just going to. Uh, add a new column here, right? This column I'm going to show 
say as fx, right? fx means f multiplied by x, right? So x is here, f is here, okay? So you need to multiply this, f multiplied by x. Zero into five is zero. One multiplied by 10 is 10. Two multiplied by eight, 16. Three multiplied by five, 15. Four multiplied by two is eight, right? Okay. So then what are you supposed to do? You need to add these two columns. May columns they get in a data of right? So let's add now. In the column F, what is the total? You have 10 here, five plus five is another 10. Okay. Altogether you have 30 here, right? Then the total. FX column total Zero plus 10 plus 16 plus 20 plus 5 plus 8 you are getting 49. Is that correct? Yeah, 49. Then 10 lona, at least 49, right? Okay. So these two numbers, put a may or compute karabu numbers, they got up again, sigma gala. Sigma gain a Greek letter. The Greek letter sigma refers to the total, right? So this 30 puta, this is sigma f. That means total of the f column. Your column here is F. May I scan a column make a total like an ergot? The column F, the total of the column F is sigma F. So sigma F is how much? 30. Then what is the name of this 49? May Hathalis Namu Namu got them. This is sigma of what? Sigma of FX. FX can a column make a total like a Hathalis Namu. A Hathalis Namu to what Namak then the Pulamu got sigma FX can, right? So in order to compute the mean, you need what? Sigma fx and sigma f. We have computed both over here, right? Then what you need to do is you need to just substitute that into this equation, right? Very simple. So over here, what is my sigma fx? Sigma fx is, uh, uh, sorry, is that incorrect? Wait, 10 plus 16 plus 15 plus eight. Yeah, 49 is correct, right? Yeah, this is correct, okay. Right, so sigma fx is 49. This one, 49 divided by sigma f is how much? 30. Boom, now, how much is your answer? 49 divided by 30, you are getting 1.6. Okay, yeah, 1.6 is your average. That is your mean x bar is, 1.6, all right? Then going into the mode, then you have a mode bigger compute kernel with it. Look at mode bigger compute kernel for unroot frequency distributions. There's no formula given here, right? Because why? You don't need a formula to get the answer. That's why, right? That's why mode bigger kernel, single in the mate, mate kernel. This is the most repeated number in your data set. So what is the most repeated number in your data set? If I clear the ink here. Bindu evati no pahak, there are five zeros. How many ones are there? How many days you have sold one unit? There are 10 days. You have sold two units in eight days, three units in five days, and four units in two days, right? So what's the num uh, what's the most repeated or most frequent number of units sold you sell per day? Should be one, right? So your MO should be how much? Your mode should be. One, right? Where do you want to repeat the number? What is the number which is most uh, repeated in your data set? You don't, do you need a formula to identify this? Not at all. Simply, you have to take the highest frequency. You have to very poor frequency. You have to take the number. Simple as that. Okay? Right. Then, what's the next one? Media. Ah, media. Single in the there. That is the very center of your data set. How to compute that? 10 plus 1 divided by 2 th term. Okay, this is that. Let me show you how it works. Am I metana? That was p of p. What's the total number here? We already computed this 30, right? So in your data set, there are 30 days, right? Altogether, there are 30 days. Okay. So what you are trying to find here is Puta, if you, if you, uh, how do I say, arrange your data in an ascending order. You can add a number, 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 you can add a
polymer cathode, if you create a sequence, which number is at the very middle? That is what we are trying to find. In other words, Puta, let me show you how it is, right? So let's say 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? Bindu Davas Pahakti. It was a dinner, I gave a dia. One, 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 likewise, a homo gila. Antimata Kia Venegan. Antimata Oka, Deca Venegan, sorry, Hatara Venegan, right? Hatareva Deca at the very beginning. See, right? Ah, if you write all these numbers, there would be 30 numbers here, right? Numbers of them metana sequence again, Tihakti and known, right? Where numbers set the gay puta. Right? We need the number at the very center, right? To come, so to compute this, to identify this, we need to identify the center. Hari right? That is what this formula is for. See, n plus one divided by two th term. So n plus two, sorry, n plus uh, not two, n plus one. N plus one. Divided by two th term, right? So how many number of days are there altogether? Thirty plus one divided by two th term. Thirty plus one is thirty-one. Thirty-one divided by two, fifteen point five. Fifteen point six term. Okay. Ekya ne waage sequence ke. Carlos Pahalava does not have fifteen point five. A position negative in a number of the my today. Media neck of India, Madda Steven. Right? So, what is that number? Oh, what's that number? See, from there are five zeros here. Nathan Tenagan, what numbers do you know? Paha, right? It was said Pahayda Pahalava and up until fifteen, you have ones. The K one it was a thing. If you take the total of these two, you are getting 15. Then from 15 up until 23, you have twos, right? 23. Then the next five numbers are threes. That means from in your sequence, from person 23 to person 28, you have threes. Then the last two numbers are fours. The numbers here. This is how the accumulation works, right? So, okay, Pahalava is a Pahaki and a number of women. Are you a Pahalava when a country in number one? It about a very very what should be the number? This is your number. They got me the team, right? Wait, let me let me draw uh, write this in a way that it is clear. Okay, watch this. Huh? And now, Bindua, 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 and the numbers Pahaki and was it? Echo, 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 echo. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then you have two, 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 two. two. Again here, two. Yes, you have five here. Two and two, eight. Then, two name of dinner, three, 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 three. Okay. Then, Two fours. This, I have ascended this, right? You don't have to do this in the exam. Of course, I'm just trying to explain what happens here, right? So, Medana 15.5 kina portion negative number. What is that number? That is what we are trying to find, right? See, this is one, two, three, four, five, okay? Right? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Ah, methane tell you, I'll 15 term, I will line, right? Ethaning hard, 15 world, what are very rich, gamam, right? 15.5 is not an absolute position. There's no number at 15.5. But hypothetically speaking, if you go beyond the 15th number in your sequence, what is the next number? It has to be two. Ah, you know, and I make a tamay put there, Media and nigger in the UMD is supposed to be how much? Two. Right? So that is what we are trying to find. Okay, the numbers, the Hagata make a hurry center gap here and number again. What's the number at the middle? That is what median is, right? So this is the answer, right? So remember, 
मे फंक्शन ने किन दिन ने पुते एब्सोल्यूट आंसर करने में फ्रॉम हियर यू आंसर वाज व्हाट 15.5 टर्म आठ की वनी पादे की ने का द की ने का दाना में तो निंग वाट आंसर कर दिया था दिन दिस इज जस्ट वे एन इंडिकेशन ऑफ वे आईट इज बट योर फाइनल आंसर इज हाउ मच योर फाइनल आंसर इज टू अगर आंसर का टू अरे so just because you do do this equation you are not arriving at the final answer based on this indication you need to find where it is that would be in this case how much 2 right okay i hope that is clear so this is a simple computation of mean mode than the median for an group frequency distribution okay right so let me clear my screen so So for group frequency distribution, you can watch my videos. Okay, then deriving the least square regression line. Okay, this is question number four. In the exam, how many marks do you get for this question? You will get ten marks guaranteed for this question, right? Okay, let me remind you how this works. Y equals a plus b x is the formula for the regression line. Okay, then. A is assumed to be C, B is assumed to be M. That means, what we are calling is that any straight line, like a formula, like a y equals m x plus c. Kill. The guy, do you remember this from your Oliver studies? I suppose, right? M is your gradient, the slope, right? C is your intercept, right? So these two, it's the same formula. These two are given two different letters, right? Previously, your m was m is now b. Your c, the intercept, is now a. So there is no difference between the formula that you use in your level studies and this formula. This is just a different way of interpreting. Okay, it's a simple equation for a straight line. Some salary rate or whatever, some you can do on it. Right. So in your studies, you must remember. M and C may M sah C kya na dega or compute kara. When you are doing this in your Oliver studies, you must have must remember when you are solving the straight line formula puta. What did you do? You did assign numbers for M and C. Mena me dega ne was compute kare, right? This is a formula for straight line, right? Okay. So in that same sense, may Y equals B X uh, A plus B X formula ke. In this formula, what are the functions or what are the letters that you need to solve? A and B. When I mean A, so how B can I take a compute? Kerala, today, how many? You can get the formula for your straight, straight line. Am I clear? Okay. So this A and B, you can compute using these two formulas. B can I take a compute? Can I pull a new formula again? A can I take a compute? Can I pull a new formula? That's what it is, right? So there are two formulas to compute A and B separately. Right, and remember, to do this, you can also use what? You can also use your calculator. Make a cal again, how that not pull up? Right, that means if you enter your data set, the cal can easily tell you what is A and what is B. Right, if you can't remember how to do this, be very familiar because this is ten marks in your exam. Make exam again, I'll do the higher. Right, so make sure just as you try to do this using equations. You know how to do this using the calculator as well. So please re-watch the video about calculator usage. Right? Okay. Okay. So this is my example. My example like a mouth. How do we do it? Right? So the sales units is x. The profit is y. Dependent and independent variables x and y. Right? So what are the columns that I need? I need actually uh, two columns. Yeah, I need. Let me pull it nicely. Can't have been there in the other room. Okay. Ah, okay. So I am adding two extra columns. Okay. Can't have been there. Can't have been there. Let's see what we have. Okay. Here we go. Straight line. Okay. So, what are the two columns I need? Two extra columns. You need x squared and x y columns. Okay. So, x squared is how much? Make x in a column again. The value is only square. Can I do it? One. Two to the power two. That is four. Three squared. Nine. Sixteen. Twenty-five. 
36, uh, 49, then uh, 8 multiplied by 8, 64. Okay. So xy is x multiplied by y. 1 into 50 is 50. 2 into 55 is 110. 16 to 3 is uh, 180. 4 into 70, that is 280. Then 5 into 75, 5 multiplied by 75, 375. Okay, 6 into 85, 510. Uh, 7 into 90, I'm just putting the numbers here. You can double check. Uh, 18 to 95. 760. Okay. Then what you need to do is you need to add all these to the very bottom. Okay. May have a column make a more add current on a column. Right. I'm not going to do this. I mean, give you the final number here. You can do this on your own, of course. The total here is sigma x. I'm calling you again. X column make a total like a sigma x. Right. Y column make a total like a sigma y. The answer that you get here is sigma y. This is sigma x squared. This is sigma x squared, right? Ah, when the numbers are you can substitute them into these functions. In the function, they go down the below, right? So assume just an assumption, right? Let's say y equals a plus bx. May formula the Gadamata Pasiputa at a answer I cannot give me for him. But A can a answer again or twenty, B can a answer again or two point five to like under two point five X. But this is your least square regression line. That's it. This is this plus a small forecast. They will test in your example how many marks? Ten marks, right? Then may A can a kai, B can a kai or Hadana than a gun. That is the requirement. So we have done many examples in your video session. You can go back and watch how this works. This is 10 marks guaranteed. Sure shot in your exam. Okay. So these are the two formulas, and this will be given in your exam as well. Make exam make it harder than Right. Okay. Right. So that is how you do the least square regression line computation. Right. Then coming into expected value. Okay. This is under probability puta. Expected value formula king answer to gun name, right? So for expected value, you need a column called xp, right? Your x value multiplied by p value, right? Okay, the expected value with a sigma x multiplied by p, right? So when you get the data set saying that for you to compute the expected value, what you need to do is you need to take x value and multiply it by the p value, right? For example, negative 100 into 0.1 is negative 10. So negative that means it is negative, right? 10 into 0.35, that is 3.5. Then 5 into 0.1, 15 to 0.1, that is 5. 100 into 0.25, that is 25. 200 into 0.2, that is 40, right? So may column make up all that add for me add additional column make up all that for that is one sigma x into p may xp column make them xp column make a total like if you take the total that becomes x into p. So whatever that answer is what this is put your expected value your expected value is sigma x into p that is this number that you get here that me all that in a may aggregate total like a the expected value of the killer here. So in your exam, it might not be the profit. Whether profit pen or other than the bull or sale like that thumb cost take up. Whatever the number, they can give you any number in column X. What you need to do is you need to multiply the X value by the probability and simply take the total. That's it. Right. These are easy marks in your exam. Right. So this is this we have discussed on the probability. Maybe under section the first lesson, towards the very end, you will see the expected value computation right before the normal distribution computations right so this we can test in your exam right and finally relating to last year's price index okay last year's price index puta this has been only tested two times in the past right in this 
uh, part B and C. But nevertheless, just be familiar with this particular uh, particular index, especially uh, apart from the rest of the indexes. And it indexes value and mega balagane and anywhere. Okay. So the last year's price index, this formula will be given to you in the exam as well. Make our exam Sigma P1 into Q0, sigma P0 into Q0. That is the formula you have to use for last year's price index, right? So let me show you how this works based on a simple example, right? Imagine the examiner wants you to compute the last year's price index for this example, right? Okay, what do you need to do? You need to uh, yeah, start it, start off like this. Okay. So to compute last year's price index beta, you need four columns. How the columns after that four? Okay. Right. The names of the columns are P1, Q0. P0, Q0, right? Uh, maybe these two columns you don't need. We are only going to show you the last year's price index, right? Our price index is the last two columns, right? So that is why. Okay. So only two columns is sufficient. Okay. Now, how to derive Q1, sorry, P1 into Q0 and P0 into Q0? I will explain how this works, right? Okay, Lamai, Madhuri Agan, Age price column make a Tiena price columns decaptin and within price in 2010 and price in 2023, right? Pagu to the price second 2023 price second ama P1 Kela Kia, the number which is more recent. Passena number, the das, the high, the das, Visituna Gatam Puta, what is the more recent uh, number that you have? Your reason number would be 2023. So prices in 2023, you can you can say them as, or you can identify them as P1, right? Then P0 would be the other column. Calling in a number, give it the das, the high and a parana rud, I parana rud that other price segatama, P0, base your price sega with it again, right? So that is how you identify P1 and P0, right? Similarly, this should be Q1. This should be Q0. Then quantities would be enough to out with the Hegel. The dust, the high quantity got then the dust, which is to make quantity got thinner. You have the quantities in 2023 and 2010 as well, right? Ah, so for both these, you can identify what is the quantity. The more recent year's quantity is Q1, the older year's quantity is Q0. Right? After that, it's a simple matter of multiplying these, right? So P1 into Q0. Okay. If you multiply the columns, P1 is this, Q0 is this. If you multiply the columns, you can multiply the answer. Like for example, 10 into 1 is 10. 15 into 5 is 75. 16 into 10 is 60. 20 into 8 is 160. Right? Okay. Then P0 into Q0. What is the next one? I will use a different color for that. Okay. P0 into Q0. P0 kia naker. Multiply kar and nona. Wait, I will use red. Okay. P0 has to be multiplied by Q0. This column multiplied by this column. That should be here. That means 5 into 1 is 5. 10 into 5 is 50. 2 into 10 is 20. 25 into 8 is uh, 200, right? Yeah, 200. Okay. So whatever the totals that you get here, you need to add them. Okay. Right. So the total that you get here, methentena total lagaputa, sigma P1 multiplied by Q0. The total that you get here, sigma P0 multiplied by Q0. Right. So in your last year's price index, LPI, your formula is what? Sigma P1 into Q0 divided by Sigma P0 into Q0, right? I see. 
So, yeah, and this you can multiply this by half, right? Okay, so for this, these are, these are the numbers you have to take. Methentine answer, methentine answer. By these two, if you take it and put it over here, may number go methentine, you know, methentine number go multiply it 100. That is the final answer you can get, right? So this is a very simple uh, example for the last year's price index, right? This has been tested in your exam. So in your exam also, if they are checking index numbers, if they want to check this under uh, the written section, this is the most probable question that I can see, right? Our, our index numbers of make a and put a possible question name, right? Okay, so this is the end of our Target question discussion. Right? So, we have a topic that we have to do with example question. If you want to target question based on analysis, I have discussed today. Right? These, all these six points we have discussed now. Right? So, now do your own self assessment. You need to know yourself. Right? What are the things I don't know and what are the things I do know? Right? I don't know what your status is in your studies. Maybe you know all this stuff. Maybe you know half of this stuff. Right? So when I'm doing these sessions, Puta, you can understand, okay, what are the things I'm weak at? Some of the things, maybe when you are doing question number four, you can't remember head or tail of that question. Fine. You can mark it. You have one month. You can go back and refer to your studies. Right? So make sure whatever the studies you are doing, at least they are minimal. Minna me deep dive section neke tiye na ne sections tika baat pua study kalle ando, right? I will give you a guarantee. If you are familiar with these deep dive areas, me deep dive section neke mama me point out kalle tiye na section sette ka vitarab balan gya tu da, you can pass the exam, right? So that is my guarantee. Okay. So I'm that confident about this analysis because 81 is very easy to predict, right? So you can use this deep dive section for your information and in order to study and focus your efforts in the most possible questions in your exam. Okay. So that I have done for the, all the seven topics. All right. Okay. Now moving on to, uh, yeah, questions and answers. Okay. Here we go. What are the things in the chat? Let me have a look at it. Uh, Okay. Are we allowed to use calculators? Of course. We are allowed to use calculators for sure. Right. Uh, then there are some answers. Okay. Okay. Exam make a calculator usage. Okay. Let me uh, let me explain that to you, Buddha. For the calculators, uh, you can use FX 100 MS, FX 991 MS. FX 991ES, FX 991EX. These calculators you can use in the answer without a problem, right? It has to be a scientific calculator. It shouldn't be like a normal calculator, like you see in a grocery shop. Grocery shop, where you have big buttons, not that calculator. You need to buy this scientific calculator, right? I hope you already have these calculators, right? Otherwise, uh, you can't get the practice. If you haven't purchased already, please make sure you go ahead and buy one of these types. Maybe it is available in JMZ. I'm not sure about the stock availability. If it is not available in JMZ office, you can always go to a bookshop. Bookshop You can uh, buy these calculators, okay? Then uh, will these formulas be given? Be given. I ask question. I mean A and B. A and B formulas. These two formulas you can see in your exam paper. This will be there in your exam. This will be given. That is your answer. Okay. What else? Uh, can we get the recordings? Ah, uh, that could I, I think yes, because uh, as I know, this call is being recorded, right? So I will check with the JMC management. I think this will be uh, made available for you. 
in the recording as well. But nevertheless, I will share these uh, presentation materials with you so you can steer your discussions. Okay. Sir, can I use FX 911 ES plus calculator? Of course not, sir. So over here, Buddha, FX 991 ES, okay, variant. There's another variant called FX 991 ES 991 ES plus. That is also possible. No problem. You can use this in your exam as well, right? So all these calculators serve the same purpose. Some of the functions would be different. These things I, am, I have discussed when I'm doing the uh, theory sessions. In some of the computations, Buddha, the way you have to come to the final answer would be different in different types of uh, calculators, right? So be mindful or be familiar with your calculator type. If you have a MS calculator, you can use the ES calculator. You can't use the ES calculator because the way you compute the answers using a ES calculator can be slightly different, right? So whatever the types you choose, ES, MSO, EX, be familiar with the process or the steps pertaining to that specific calculator, right? So that is something you should note of. So to find more, do you uh, how we have to see the repeating numbers in the frequency, right? So to find the more, we have to see the repeating numbers in the frequency. Yes, okay. If I go back to the mode question, I think this is the question you are asking, right? Repeating numbers for mode, yes. Repeating numbers. Mode means the most repeated numbers, right? Number in your data set, right? If you read this in summary, make columns they go number of units and the number of days. So if I read the first row, that means there are five days where you haven't sold any units. Right? Then there are 10 days where you did not you sold only one unit, right? There are eight days where you sold only two units each. Five more days, your sale is three units per day. And in two days, you could sell four units per day. If you take overall, how many number of units? that you are most likely to sell per day. The most frequent number of units that you can identify within this data set. What is it? It should be, number of days would be, this is the more, right? So this is where your mod lies. Okay, I hope that is clear. Okay. Then uh, coming into, yes, what else do we have? Yeah, I think those are the questions we have. Okay, yeah, I guess those are all the questions you have. Anyways, if you have any questions, doubts, you can send those into the WhatsApp chat as well, right? I can have a look at them before the exam, right? So if you want to discuss something, uh, using your mic, you can also unmute yourself and ask me. So why didn't they put you in the physical lectures? Our current sir's explanation is very bad. Even I don't go to BMS class. I like your explanation. Oh, wow. <laughs> but the, the reason is I am not uh, currently in Sri Lanka. I am participating in this lecture from overseas, actually. So I cannot uh, attend the physical class. So what you can do is you can refer to my recorded session in uh, V-Learning. Uh, with that, I think you can uh, get the theory sessions uh, covered, right? So uh, whatever the sessions uh, you, you are going to watch, you can watch them and raise your concerns with me. You can get my contact details from, uh, from JMC. And also I can, uh, I'm also in this uh, WhatsApp chat, right? You can find my number there. So with that, you can uh, get your understandings uh, clear, okay? What else do we have? So there, when there's a decimal answer, is there any requirement? How many decimals you should round off to? No, you don't have to, right? There is no standard for that, but make sure you are following some uh, uniformity, right? 
round off karana decimals dehe karana if you are rounding off for two decimals use it across the board right for all your answers if you are rounding off for three decimal places use it across the board right so in one answer you are rounding off to three numbers in now one answer you are rounding off to one decimal place so it's it's a kind of a mess when you do that right so when you are rounding off your answers make sure you follow a consistent approach right there's no give recommended standard for that as long as your answers are clear to the examiner you will get the full marks you don't need to worry about the rounding off that's not a problem in your exam right okay what else do we have thank you so much for the opportunity sir really very really useful and so many things today thank you very much of course you are most welcome to the so i will share with you this presentation and you can uh, you can refer to it and target your examination studies in such a way right so i wish you all the very best for your exam i hope you guys can score good marks right so this is very easy you can target a passes also right and uh, give me good results all right thank you very much and have a good weekend most welcome guys bye bye